Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and today I wanted to share something with you that is kind of a nice example of something that's not very rare or maybe not that exciting, but it's a really, uh, really good example of it. So here we have a, a beautiful example of a hair follicle. Uh, you can see that this is the, the follicle infundibulum, the part that opens to the skin surface. Uh, down here, these are sebaceous glands, the part that make the oily secretion that goes into the follicle and kind of coats the hair. So this part of the follicle is called the isthmus. And then down, way down here, we see the root of the follicle. And you can actually see a little bit of the hair shaft right here. It, they're kind of fragile and they break and pop out of the section when we section the tissue sometimes. Uh, I'll show you right down here. You can see an example. There's, a, there's the hair shaft sitting kind of on top of the tissue. Normally, it would go right into the lumen right there is where it belongs. But in any case... The reason I'm showing you this, that's just the normal hair uh, histology, and I've got a, a video about that that I'll put a link to down below if you need a refresher. But this follicle is not totally normal. It, it's filled with uh, inflammation, neutrophils, and some uh, grungy debris here. So it's making like a little pustule up here. So on the patient, this was a patient with multiple reddish bumps with little white kind of pus-filled, um, uh, what we would call a pustule, little tiny pustules centered on hair follicles. So the dermatologist thought that this was probably folliculitis, and they were correct, of course, because this is an inflamed hair follicle. That's where the word folliculitis comes from, fo hair follicle inflammation. And in this case, the inflammation is mostly neutrophils, and that's the type of inflammation we usually see when we have uh, what we could call kind of suppurative, or that means pus-forming um, folliculitis, the type that, has, uh, that usually is infectious in nature. And uh, you can see in the, the top there, there's a little pustule, Here's a little tiny bit of a hair shaft right there. We're cutting it in cross section, so it looks like a little circle. There's neutrophils there, and the dermatologist knew that it was uh, folliculitis, but what they wanted to know is, is it because of uh, bacteria or is it because of fungus? So they did a biopsy because of that. They attempted some treatments. It wasn't responding as expected, and so they wanted to find out if they needed to change the treatment. So in this case, we were able uh, to give them an answer because down here in the inflamed hair follicle, there's some blue, grungy, speckled material and if we go really close so this is the closest i can go on my microscope but if you use an oil lens you could see it a little better these little blue things are tiny blue round dots they're very very small and it is hard to get them to show up uh on this screen but i'm going to try to show you here so these are bacteria uh these these little tiny all this blue stuff in here there's thousands of little bacteria uh in here in the lumen right next to this crunched up uh neutrophil Debris. So this is bacterial folliculitis. It's very common. Probably all of us have had it at some point in time, either a single little follicle or multiple follicles. Uh, it's usually caused by Staphylococcus aureus uh, or, or Staph aureus. This is the same kind of Staph that if you've heard of MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staph aureus, that's just a special uh, type of Staphylococcus aureus, a type that's uh, uh, resistant to the, the drug um, uh, methicillin. So in any case, the um, this is probably caused by Staph aureus. That's the most common. There are some other less common causes of folliculitis. But this is bacterial folliculitis forming pus. And I thought it was a really nice example because uh, it's only occasionally that we get a perfect cut through the hair follicle like this where you can see the entire thing. And I thought it was quite pretty and nice. Um, and uh, just to show you uh, for teaching purposes, I wanted to highlight the bacteria and show you a little bit better. And look at that, this is a gram stain. So gram stain uh, highlights uh, organisms either blue if they're gram positive or red if they're gram negative. And a lot of times this is used in the microbiology lab, but occasionally we do it on uh, tissue sections like this. Uh, and it can be quite helpful in certain cases. Now, again, in this case, I knew that these would, get, would be gram positive cocci because they're cocci and they're in a follicle and there's not that many gram negative cocci. And the ones that there are are like Neisseria and uh, 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 Neisseria gonorrhea and Neisseria meningitidis. And they're not gram negative cocci that would be on the surface of the skin or an aluminum of a hair follicle. So there's no way it would be those. But in any case, for teaching, I thought that was really nice because you can see them on the H&E, but the gram stain really makes them pop. It makes them stand out. Again, there's the, if you're a, watching this and you're not a pathologist, uh, just to point out what we're seeing, that's a hair shaft right there. Um, and this bright, uh, this bright area there, that's called the, the cuticle. It's part of the inner root sheath of the hair follicle. And the gram stain, I guess it's the crystal violet of the gram stain, makes it really this beautiful magenta color, just as a nice incidental side effect. But the reason we did this was not for any of that. I just... I'm easily distracted. This is because the, the bacteria, they turn this bright blue color on the gram stain. And so those are gram positive cocci. And again, I know if you're like, I can't see the little dots, 
that's just because um, my scope uh, with this camera, I can see them better on my scope than you can see uh, the camera view. But if you want to see the really pretty pictures like they take in textbooks, you usually need like a 100x objective with uh, oil immersion. And I, I don't uh, use that on my scope routinely. So um, in any case, that's a nice example of bacteria in a follicle with neutrophils. So it's a bacterial folliculitis. And I had also done a fungal stain to make sure it wasn't fungus and that was, that was negative. And the last thing I'll leave you with before I go is to show you what the, what the first uh, initial slide looked like. Did it look like that? That was actually only when I did deeper sections. When I got my first slide, the first cut into the block was like this, a subcorneal pustule, a bunch of neutrophils underneath the stratum corneum. So sometimes when we see that, if we cut deeper into the block, we'll find that that's a pustule connected to a hair follicle, which is exactly what happened here. I was suspicious that's what it'd be. The dermatologist also thought that's what it would be. And so in this case, when we did deeper sections, we cut further into the block, further into the block. And uh, then on, the, on those deeper sections, it went from this to, to the view I showed you. So isn't that nice how much it changes? And it's a good general tip that if you have a shave, if you're a pathologist watching this, if you have a punch box or a shave that was kind of too small for them to split in half or bisect when grossing the specimen, uh, a good rule of thumb is if what you see doesn't quite make sense uh, uh, or isn't exactly representative of what uh, the, the clinical appearance is, if, if you're seeing stuff on your slide that doesn't exactly explain what the dermatologist is seeing clinically, cut deeper sections into the block, especially when you have a shave or a punch that has not been cut in half. Because when it's cut in half, then what you're seeing is basically right in the center of the specimen, which is usually the dermatologist doing the biopsy, trying to get the area of interest in the middle of the specimen. But if you're starting to, uh, uh, putting a whole punch or a whole shave in without cutting it in half first, the histotechs are just cutting into the edge of the block and usually we'll have to go a little deeper to see the actual center of the specimen. They do that on purpose so that they don't accidentally cut too far through the block. So that's just a little uh, pro tip if you're, if you're new to derm path. Deeper sections are one of the best, uh, highest value things that we do. They sometimes totally save the day, more, sometimes more than all the special stains and fancy stuff. Now, of course, we need those sometimes too. But in any case, deeper sections here solved, uh, solved the problem for us. So just remember that when you start out with a pustule, sometimes doing deepers will show you that, uh, that actually it's not just a pustule, it's a pustule because of a folliculitis. Of course, there are a wide variety of other dermatologic diseases that cause pustules that are not folliculitis. So you can go and look up uh, uh, in some derm path references to see all of those. That's beyond the scope of this video. So in any case, uh, seven, almost eight minutes of talking about bacterial folliculitis. I thought it was a really particularly beautiful example, and uh, I'll just leave you with that last view there as we go. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day, and uh, check out the links in the reference below, and I'll have uh, other videos on my channel that you might like as well.